So, what are we going to talk about tonight? Has somebody got an urgent question or something they want to share urgently? You can come and sit here to share it, that's very, very nice. Or you can do it from where you're sitting, as you like. You have a bit more fun up here, I can tell you, but uh, it's a bit more difficult to come here, perhaps. Do we have a microphone? So I think I'd like to start with Anna, actually, who's now called Madhu. Is that okay for you? <laughs> Would you like to do it here? Yeah. <sighs> so I met Madhu some, some months ago, maybe about three months ago, I think. She came to one of our transformation weeks, and she cried a lot. And when, um, when I had a personal meeting with her, we tried to discover why she was crying. And then she told me, well, you know, now I'm 22. When I was um, 16, I got for Christmas my first spiritual book. I miss probably not exactly what you told me. but And basically, she's been secretly reading spiritual books since she was 16 and inside has had this enormous interest to discover more about herself. And um, this is very beautiful because she also told me that her parents, uh, perfectly lovely parents, but they're not in any way really supporting her interest. And so it's all been inside. Yeah? She also is at university in Cologne and she's studying sports. She has lots of friends there, but equally they're not interested in what she's interested. Is that right? Yes. And so um, after she um, spent that week with us, she came to a retreat in Spain. So quite a few of you became familiar with her. And at the end of the retreat, she kind of told me, well, you know, I'm a young woman. I, I have all kinds of things I want to explore in my life. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And then, of course, she's been coming every week here because this is probably the only place she can meet nice people like you who she can really meet and where she feels she's also really being met. You see? Is that right? Yes. <laughs> what, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're not going to be a typical young lady, you see. You have to see that for whatever reason, inside you, there is an interest which is not shared by many, many people. In fact, it's quite rare. So what we've got here tonight is a very lovely selection of older and younger people who actually do want to know about their inner world. Mm -hmm. So these are your people. Yeah? Not exactly these ones, but uh, these kind of people. So it's, it's quite brilliant that you've discovered this, yeah? yeah? Because now when you start planning the rest of your life, after your exams in February, was it? Yeah. Now you can plan in all these nice people. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I came here or um, like found people who share the same interests because I think if I haven't, I don't know what would have happened. Wouldn't have been good. Yeah, for me. Right, right. So, I mean, we have older people and younger people here. And I think a lot of the older people, maybe you started having an interest when you were younger. And maybe you couldn't really find that your friends were very interested. And uh, so it's, it's a bit curious what, what happens, actually, yeah? You can feel very much as if something is wrong with you because you have an interest which is not shared by many other people around you. And so some people actually kind of sabotage themselves because they think, oh, something is wrong with me. Maybe you have this feeling sometimes. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, because like my parents don't share the interest, friends don't share the interest. And if I ask my mother, I think I, I told you, or I don't know, like that I'm confused, like who am I? What is going on? Ah, um, she says, I don't remember what she said, but yeah, didn't help at all. So it w it felt really scary and because I had no idea what's going on. Yeah. Hmm. She probably also doesn't really know what's going on. She's doing what she was told by her mother and you're obviously not going to do what your mother would want you to do. You're going to find your own way, you know. Yeah. And this is the beauty of your situation. You're very young and you've got time even to make a few mistakes. You, know, you might go down the wrong road a bit, you know, you never know. So now you have lots of time to discover really wonderful things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. Like, I don't know what will happen. So right. it's exciting to not plan or like stop myself from planning because of course I'm like worried what should I do if I don't do my master's degree what should I do um, but I don't know and that's really nice so mm -hmm. and do you have any anything to say to these people do you have a question about your situation oh. It's uh, hard to think when I'm up here, so... Ah, oh, then you can just stay here, you know. We can, yeah. make, we can make you this chair, you know, you can stay here, and that way you won't have to... <laughs> um, no. Hello? No, I don't know what to say. <laughs> But what I can say to you, you know, is that, you know, in a way what you're faced with is a situation where um, people, most of the people you meet are accepting a certain style of life. And this style of life has been developed by the society. Yeah. And some people have more leaning towards maybe religious things and other people are leaning more towards other things. You're perhaps leaning towards sportive, sporty things and so on. But fundamentally, without really talking about it, we grow up with a certain pattern, a certain acceptance of what the society is offering. So now you've got your exams in February and then probably your mother's already discussing with your father what will be next for her, you know, what should she do next? too young to find a husband so we'll give her a few more years and so on yeah hmm. but because you you've got something unusual inside you and i'm in a way reaching out to other people who are sitting here who have something maybe unusual inside you you can also trust your own essence and this is really beautiful because it's it's almost as if you have your own navigation system which can reach up and be directed by the wisdom of the universe. Mm. And you can trust this because this is the one thing that is all to do with you and the divine wisdom. So if you're going to trust something, why not trust that? It seems like the best deal, really. Yeah. And you've um. discovered this while you're still at college. And soon you'll be, you know, you'll be going out the other side and the big life is going to kind of embrace you. But if you trust this connection you have, because you definitely have this connection, how could you possibly, when you were young at 16, wanting to read The Power of Now from Eckhart Tolle? Hmm. You see? And when you read it, you were somehow touched because then you've got Be Here Now from Ram Dass, you know? hmm. So you've been on all the good books. So who's guiding that? Good question. Yeah, but you have to get the answer, you see, because the answer is very beautiful. The answer is that we're being guided by, by an enormous intelligence. And if we can uh, surrender into that intelligence, then our life goes from moment to moment quite differently 
than if we're trying to follow something that somebody else or they, whatever they is, maybe we can say it's a society, what they are telling us. That means that we are not making our decisions? Yes, it means we're not making our decisions in But the way think... that society would like you to believe you're making your decisions. But we think like... We don't want to think too much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What you have to give up, what you have to surrender, if you like, is thinking too much. Yeah. You have to trust something more subtle. And this, this takes some, some time to really um, develop so that it's really a quick connection. But you have time. You have time. I mean, you're already getting a taste of this, I feel. Mm. Is that right? In the retreat where you could live for two weeks with a lot of these people, you had a different kind of connection to them and you could talk to them in a different way, I think. Yeah. Like, I don't understand what happened. Um, but I was not, like, thinking about conversations or something. It just always came or... Like what I wanted to do, like I just did things. So, so why can't you just carry that on for the rest of your life? Another probably 80 years, you know? Why not? Just that way. Yeah. It's completely against the conditions, like what we know. And yeah, learn. well, it's sort of against the conditioning. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I would say the majority of people sitting here are, I hope, functioning like that, you see. Yeah. She does. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many people I know who are sitting here are functioning in that way. You see. They all had lunch today, I think. Anybody not have lunch today? Yeah, they all had lunch, so even in the, this different kind of functioning, they managed to have lunch, you see. Mm. Because one of the fears is that if you don't function in the regular accepted society way, you might not get lunch every day. Yeah. You know, and that's a bit serious. So, but is it true? Well, definitely not. Like, we can't know. Well, I, for example, in my own case, you know, I lived in India for quite a few years and I had no income, basically no income there. I arrived with a little bit of money and uh, that didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. I think it lasted long enough that I could rent a big apartment and then rent out some rooms in the apartment. So by being a sort of landlord, I could have enough extra money to, to eat, maybe. So my life was very simple, but it was exactly where I wanted to be, doing exactly what I wanted to do at that time. And so I wasn't really interested in other people's opinion. My mother wrote a few desperate letters, you know. <laughs> Dear son, <laughs> are you enjoying sitting in the sun doing nothing? <laughs> what about the money we spent on your education? <laughs> I think it wasn't easy for my parents. It may not be easy for your parents. Because definitely when I went off at a kind of tangent, um, I think for them it was hard for them to understand what was motivating me. Yeah. They would think, I think, um, so what do you want to do? You want to do nothing? Like, you have to do something. You need, like, always you need a job, you need, you're working till you're 70, so better get a good job and good educate, whatever. But right. You'll definitely need a husband, obviously. Yeah. Pardon? You'll obviously need a husband as well as a job. Yeah. 
That's you need uh, somebody to protect you, and care for you, and so on and so on. Mm. Yeah. Fix the light bulbs, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, no <laughs> idea how that works. <laughs> <laughs> So my advice to you is you, you trust your inner power because you're probably not very much challenged at the moment in your power. So you haven't had to really um, be confident in your own power. Yeah? Mm. But that's going to come soon. It's going to come next year because next year you have to take a next step. And your next step may not be in total agreement with your parents' idea of a next step. And then you have to find your position, you know, you have to find your power. Yeah. Yeah, that was always hard for me to, yeah. Right. Okay, very good. Perhaps we have some older person who would like to share a bit about how they escaped out of the regular society life or maybe didn't escape and have some regrets about not escaping. And maybe you have a few words for uh, madhu. Madhu means honey or sweetness. As you saw, she's very sweet. You want to come? Okay. So here we have Shakti. No, no sorry, not you. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was. She was just. I didn't see you actually. So, so Shakti is a little bit older. She has. <laughs> she's had an extra ten years to play around. Anything you want to say to Madhu? I mean, you somehow became friends during the retreat, I think, yeah? Yeah, we were sharing one bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we have a quite deep connection since then or even before because we also met in the Transformation Week here. And the question was like a little bit about um, escaping society life. And a few years ago, I escaped like the society life. I studied history of arts and Slavistics. I did also a master degree. So um, honestly, I did the master after the bachelor because I had no clue what to do. <laughs> and I already knew I didn't want to work in this business or be in that society. But well, I did it because I couldn't see another option for me that time. Um, what did you study when you did the masters? Also, to do with history art. of arts and Slavistics. So you're an expert on art, are you? Yeah, such a big expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but when I finished the study, uh, I felt like, okay, I've done it, so I can do now something else. And I already did a lot of um, yoga at that time. It helped me to calm my mind, to, um, yeah, to do something with my body, to get connected. And I felt like um, very close to the philosophy 
of yoga and I was um, connected to a um, to a community, to a yoga community where I then moved in after the studies because I knew I do not want to work there, I do not want to do something else, I just want to go deeper in that. Um, yeah, and I went there and I stayed there and it was an amazing time. But after a while, after like a year, I felt like I have to go somewhere else because it didn't felt right anymore. And so I went on travel and um, like at the beginning of this year, I tried or wanted to go back to the society some sort of because I felt so empty after traveling and also, yeah, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Then you have to ask, you know. You yeah, ask. I asked, but there was like no no answer. No answer. Oh, you probably yeah. hadn't turned on the navigation. Yeah, I don't know. It was like turn yeah, it on. yeah. I turned something else on. Like the mind was loud, um, because there is something I have to do, and all the society stuff again catched. Um, yeah, and it took me also a few months, and a lot of practice. And also a lot of being alone to recognize that I need community, that I want to go deeper in that. And that like the society normal life is <laughs> I think you know what I mean. <laughs> and then you found this place actually, yeah? Yeah. Then I found this place. So although you hadn't turned your own navigation on, the navigation was anyway working all yeah. the time. Yeah, some sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. I'd like to get somebody who's a bit grayer, like I am. Any grayer people like to come and share how they escaped? Or maybe they haven't escaped. Maybe they're still escaping. Or maybe they've already surrendered and they're not, not trying to escape anymore. We have space for somebody with a striped shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And you're the only one with a striped shirt, so. <laughs> you're, you're quite easy to get, of course, yeah. but. <laughs> Simple to see me. What's that? Simple to see me. Yes, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. So in fact, I don't know if I'm a very good example for for young people here. You know. Maybe you put it a little bit closer. Because uh, I have yet uh, the f I've worked now for forty two years, uh, and I what was always on the way, uh, just deciding on the material world, earning a lot of money having a good time, going to good restaurants, spending, uh, traveling the world, building a house. And uh, it worked very much for me. Therefore, it was a uh, little bit living like uh, since I've been, uh, I've been, I'm a sober alcoholic since uh, 27 years. Means um, when I got uh, um, into the into this situation that I didn't that life uh, confronted with with a situation where I had to change I went on the way to uh, to to replace uh, spiritus versus spirit I think <laughs> this is the only way to get out of it a little bit and uh, 
Therefore, I needed now 26 years. And uh, all these times, I spent uh, enormous amount of hours in, in endless discussions and uh, political uh, discussions where, where no one is uh, humble and no one tells the truth what is going on. Everyone has his own interest on his side and there's no real re uh, relation. And I, 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 I felt in this moment that the solution is a different other, but I was in my role in society and I didn't have the courage until my pensioning to get out of this because I was a little bit lazy. It was very comfortable for me to stay in this situation. And of course, the, you, were, you were doing all that in, in a society environment where everybody else was doing that. Yeah, Money has become the... The currency, you can say. Yeah? Money is, is the current and the social the social acceptance. Uh, I was uh, uh, president of, of a trade union, and uh, it was uh, I. I spent a lot of time in uh, in higher political spheres, you know, but uh, it was simply these guys are only uh, they are cooking with water as, as you and me, you know, they are not high educated, but they have a, a, such a talent to, to, to play this game. And I was not made to play this game all the time. I, I suffered a lot between this balance of spiritual knowing uh, what should be done, uh, that only is a solution for humankind is the whole, to save the whole thing, to go for the whole thing, instead of everyone is going for his own thing. And uh, I, 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 I was very zerrissen, wie sagt man da? Told uh, inside me during all the time. And even now, you know, uh, we talk about family now. Uh, I have a brother, a brother of mine. Uh, recently, my, my, my father got 90 years old and uh, he gave me his hand during this, uh, the boss day ceremony and he didn't even look in my eyes. Your father? My, no, no, my brother. Oh, your brother. Yeah. And I asked myself now, spiritually looked, what is now my matter? Is it that I have, is, is, is it my ego who is touched because he did not look in my eyes and, uh, and I have to keep him in my, uh, in my heart? I say, you can't afford other things like this, so I, I accept you, you like this. Or should I say to my brother, listen, uh, that's not going on. If you, I, I don't want to be, uh, I, 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 I hesitate to confront him because I, <sighs> these are my people, you know, and, um, it, and it's very, even if it's the age of, you know, just to make you feel yeah. better. So yeah. I think it was last year I finished a book of my poems. Okay. I don't think of myself as a poet, but. Many years ago, when I was meditating a lot, I used to get spontaneous poems coming. And finally, after 20 years, I put it together in a book. So I called my brother, one of my, I've got two brothers, but I called one brother because I want to tell him that I'd like to send you a copy of the book uh, if you give me your address, because I didn't know his address anymore. And he told me something like, I'm not interested in poems. I never read poems. So, I mean, this is a pretty common situation that you're talking about with your brother, I think. Yeah? And in many, many families, it's not like everybody is going in one direction. Somehow, I think in many families, people are going in different directions. Yeah? And in a way, it's everybody's freedom to go into their particular direction. And unfortunately, in that moment, I realized I'd probably never see my brother again because he's about uh, 70, I don't know exactly, 76 now maybe. He's only a bit younger than me. So when he gave me this kind of answer, yeah, I knew that there was nothing that brings us again into meeting in this lifetime. And it was a very strong moment, but in the end it felt like actually there's nothing I can do because he's free not to like reading poems. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. 
but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, it hurts. It hurts very much because I'm more closer with foreign drug people than with my own people. So this, uh, I have still this instance inside me who is hurted, who, who, who don't want it, who, can, who has problems to afford it, you know? Yeah, but that could be fairly easily dealt with by letting go of an idea that your own brother and sister and mother and father, they're more special than somebody you might meet tonight in this meeting. Yeah. And I often felt this in my travels, you know, because I was uh, for many years not living in England. I, I left England when I was around 30, so for the last 50 years, in a way, I've not been based in my home country. Even I don't visit very much. And um, so in my travels, it was often the case that I would make friends for some time. For example, I went to live in Japan and I made very nice friends in Japan, including a wife. And then I left and went to live in India. So a lot of the friends I had made in Japan, I didn't see them again for many years. We had a crazy reunion, actually, after 30 years or something. Mm. You know? but the, I have a, a special question about Ramana and the I. If I understand well, the, the I is in identification that I'm separated. And if I take it personally that my brother is not looking in my eyes, giving me his hands, that means that that's a reflection of my eye. No, I think the reflection of your eye is not about your brother, it's about how you responded to your brother. Yeah. Because this was, there's some kind of conditioning in your mind which says, my brother should look me in the eye. We should have a deeper connection. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that position you got maybe many years ago, maybe you got it from your mother or I don't know who you got it, your uncle or somebody. But anyway, you, you grew up with an idea that there is some kind of special energy connection with family. Yeah, yeah brothers don't separate, for example. Yeah, yeah, but they do. Mm. And um, it may be that where you're sitting tonight, the person you're sitting next to may be uh, more in. in more open to look in your eyes at the end of the meeting than your brother was. Yeah, I, I know it, but this hurts. Yeah, but it, the hurting bit is the bit that Ramana is talking about. Yeah. Because while you hold on to various concepts and philosophies and conditioning about how to behave, when you hold on to all that stuff, then you're going to be hurt when your brother doesn't look in your eyes. I don't have the feeling that I have, but at least I'm not conscious about that I'm holding on, you know? I'm suffering like mad, but uh, and I think you should uh, uh, depersonalize the whole thing, but it's not working. What, but you what? have to, I mean, the depersonalizing is to understand that the I has no value. This whole concept that hangs on to the eye, which includes the idea that your brother should look in your eye because you're brothers, this can be let go of. That's what Ramana's advice is. You let go of mm. that. No mind he's talking about. Not having in your mind all kind of concepts and philosophies about that your brother should look in your eyes because we're brothers, we're special, we're different. And as soon as you let go of that idea about your brother, then the whole thing becomes a bit different. Yeah. I, I see it. But it's not so easy to let it go of that. So, but, but it's not only my brother. It's a, a lot of things that I personalize. With, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all, a lot of things are referring to myself. It's, it's my suffering. It's my, uh, I don't know, my, 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 my. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's uh, and I, and, and, and. The, he's the been four days in the community here, so he's been uh, you see, this is not comfortable. No, no, not at all. It's much more comfortable to carry on operating as you operated before. 
I mean, after quite a few years, because I asked for somebody with gray hair, you've got gray hair. So, you know, somebody who's older, it's much more difficult to let go of all that stuff that you've collected in your mind than it is for for Madhu, because Madhu hasn't collected very Mm -hmm. much yet. Yeah. Yeah. But in fact, uh, I, have, uh, I have the feeling it costs me everything. Exactly. You got it. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheap, you know. You, you thought it would be cheap? So you are not here to give me something, but to take me everything. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have, I have to encourage you to let go. Yeah, I don't I, really have to no, take it's, anything. It's no action, uh, active action from your side, I see. And so this can be a slowly, a slow death kind of letting go and surrendering, or Ramana is inviting that you can become with a complete surrender. You just say yes, or you can do it slowly, letting go about the brother, letting uh, go about the old, <laughs> letting go. About I the have old not boy. this time anymore, you know, to let it go. <laughs> In my life, I'm 30, 33. So I have to do the same thing that, like, uh, Anna, I have no. Matter, yeah. Matter. Uh, trust in life and, uh, and yeah, and uh, finally, uh, in fact, when you, when you ask myself now, now I think, oh shit, this will be transferred on YouTube and everyone can see it. And uh, you, you see, it's this, all this matter, uh, even if I'm, I'm, I'm very yeah, Your strong. wife is probably watching right now, and she's yeah. preparing a, a meeting when you get home. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's already probably listing a few things. Yeah. <laughs> are, are, yeah. Are we transmitting in YouTube? Yeah, this meeting is being filmed, and we're transmitting live on YouTube. So if you don't make it next time, you can, if you want, come into the meeting on YouTube, and even they can ask a question. Is that right? You can even ask a question. So maybe, Lolo, if you're listening, maybe you've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least it's very, very... Confronting and in the same time, I feel that I'm right here, you know, because I'm. I feel that uh, the thing that I I I I I I feel or this personalizing thing is now uh, aimed in my body, you know. I I see it. And well, you see the way you described your life as a politician. You said that often you felt conflicted between what seemed right for you, what would be the right decision, and the fact that each person you were dealing with were, they were discussing from their right position, yeah, what would be good for them, yeah. So you've already, if you like, been open to another way since many years probably. Yeah. But what is the other way? Should I go into the official political discussions and uh, trying there to do something or being uh, on your your way spiritual master or what and uh, you don't have to be a spiritual master no i don't you, you can just be you you know yeah this beautiful simple quote from ramana be as you are you know be as you are you know i would suggest you could leave the politicians to be as they are you know and you just now find out what is who who is yeah. the who is yeah. there you know who who if you were going to be as you are what does that mean yeah you see and you're going to notice that along the way of this discovery certain people you thought were close friends will disappear mm. but other people will come mm. And so it's it's not such an easy journey, especially in the beginning. In fact, it's a trust in life. And what else can you trust? Yeah. And what else? Because at the end, death will keep me 
uh, and will die. Sure. Surely. One of these days. Yeah. So do you have any good advice for Madhu? A young lady just starting out with her life? Please have the courage to be yourself. Because when your parents love you, they will love you also being yourself. All those who are loving you love you because you are yourself. I think this is rather beautiful advice, actually. Yeah. So when you're when you're disagreeing with your parents, yeah, you have to remember what he's saying. You know that they will anyway love you. My parents always loved me, even though I, you know, went off in a completely in a, in a direction which where they couldn't really understand anymore. I never felt they didn't love me. You are not on this earth to realize their ideas about you. That, that does not mean that you don't love them. This confrontation is not there. But it's normal. With 22, 23, it's a matter to, to go on. To go in life and to have a daughter who was, who was the same age as you. Same advice, as far as. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Well, we're getting into a bit of a thing. I mean, anybody else like to contribute to this thing? Whatever this thing is. Do you want to contribute to that or you have a different? Okay, go on then. Ah. So your hair is not grey really yet, so you're still medium. Yeah, my beard is getting a little grey. Grey, a bit grey, yeah. yeah. It'll get more grey than that though, don't worry. So after these years, yeah, what would you say to this young lady? So I think it's really, really, really important to feel what you want to do and be confident or you, you 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 can be confident in your in yourself to do that. So if you feel that um, that something is right, then it is right. Basically, <laughs> it's easy. Like it, it it is very easy. So if you feel that something is right, I think you should do that. And that is something which is not spiritual to me it's but it's something I, I think it's for everyone and I try to educate my children with that that uh, you somehow try to connect to yourself I'm saying yourself and there's that self in there but uh, um, it's interesting <laughs> I probably would have said the same thing Two months ago or something like that but uh, it would have a little bit different meaning than it has now so if you go back over this two months yeah you you also came to the retreat in spain yes now you've been here i think you did a meditation weekend and now you're here for the week yes so what kind of things are happening inside of you in this last two months so um the most interesting thing which happened is um, that I'm 
getting a lot more confident about the future, about how it works all out, how it um, that that there is a real real good chance to be happy, to <coughs> continue to go confident uh, into the future and be positive for so almost two, two or three months ago you didn't feel that that you could be confident for the future well i mean it it, it has a lot to do with I with mean, what you did think you ever notice that there is only the future you don't have any other choice really did you notice that when you were not happy with how things might go i remember you having some fears about nuclear war i think that was not a good example i should have chose something different maybe well, but you you you, you were concerned that your you know life wasn't going to work out well because of nuclear things yeah. let's say war in general and getting that the, the conditions of the outer world is getting worse right. right and do you think that might the change might be because you're now more focused on your inner world and you're leaving the outer world for somebody else to take care of. Yes. Because actually, um, you know, what can we do? You know, we have to yes. leave the future of the world uh, to a greater power, I think. Yeah, well, I, I still think there are things which I can do which makes the world a better place, right? And that's very simple. Like what? Like tidying up uh, after <laughs> your lunch. I don't know. <laughs> This maybe, is the, a very, maybe the best thing you could possibly do for humanity is to become very conscious. How about that? That's a nice thing to do, aim for because you're somebody who seems to want to have a yes. point to your life. Yeah? So yeah. the point could be to become more conscious or very conscious. Yes. Yes. So that, that may involve quite a big change in your life because, as you know, when you came to the retreat, you got a rather strong feedback from quite a lot of people, including me, that you're far too much busy talking, talking, talking. Yes. And that if you would just stop talking and be quieter, you would have more space to reflect and to know yourself. Yeah. And that was a bit tough in the beginning, sort of tough love, yeah? But you're still here, so has that been working inside you? Definitely. <laughs> so that they changed something inside myself, definitely. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah, it's... Um, It definitely is a change, but I'm uh, I'm, I'm still having an, a big eye on the outer world, and, and I'm, I'm I'm wondering like that that. Did you notice that Marco is quite quite um, when he was sitting here, he was quite vulnerable? Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah. So why is he so vulnerable? He's a very capable man. He's had a successful life. Uh, blah blah blah. So why would he sit here so so vulnerable? That was a question to me. Well, it's a question to you because I don't feel you so vulnerable, and yeah. I I I have a sense that you haven't really gone into this inner world in a very deep way. Yes, and that you still basically are very much caught up on the outer. And you're very much caught up in all kind of ideas and philosophies and blah, blah, blahs and blah, yes. blah, blahs. And to be honest, I find that a bit uncomfortable. Okay. So if you want to involve with us, you're completely welcome. But if you actually don't really want to do what we're doing, then it's probably not the right place for you. There are lots of other places where they can encourage what I think you're more interested in. I think, um, well, on the one hand side, 
the transformation week is not finished. So you've got three more days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and I agree with uh, that the, the the current experience which I have and the, the the feelings are not as good as I would have hoped they are. So the, discovering my inner self, like for example, um, having that uh, expansion, feeling that expanding in in the expanding, that is something I hope for, to be honest. But I haven't felt it yet. I doubt it will happen in the next three days. Sorry. But if that is a wish, and if it's a sincere wish, keep coming, keep coming. And of course, it takes time. You know, in my own case, I was with one teacher in India for 15 years and another teacher for five years. That's 20 years. So one week and one weekend and a couple of weeks is not like, not really going to do it all for you. you know? Well, I, I felt a little bit uncomfortable because I'm, I mean, it's now a journey for me, which is since the Spain retreat, like, uh, I don't know, one half three, month. Three months, yeah. So, yeah. Three months, yeah. right? So what do you expect? Yeah, what do you expect? <laughs> I don't expect very much in three months, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, to be honest, I expect what we what we see and get from you because you're still very caught up in all the things you were caught up three months ago. Because we're not just talking here; it's not just games, you know. I mean, you could feel maybe with Marco that it's not a game for him. He's now really, in a way, shocked to discover that spiritual life is not as much easygoing fun as he thought it was. He thought it was an easy alternative. Instead of going swimming, he can do a bit of spiritual meetings or something, you see. And now he discovered that actually John David is after total, total something, uh, yeah. eradication of any ideas or concepts or beliefs or brothers not looking in his eyes or whatever, you see. <laughs> But how long are you into that? <laughs> well, he's got grey hair, many years, you see, no, many but... years. It's not so easy to change, that's why he's so vulnerable. Yeah, I, I think it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of consciousness, of seeing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. not, 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 not right, right. Mm. Mm. And, of course, seeing it doesn't in any way depend on age because we have the young people here who I think are very much seeing it. And I don't know all the older people here, but maybe there's some older people here who still don't see it. And you're a bit close to that group at the moment. But obviously there's something that's touched in you, otherwise you wouldn't even have come to this meeting today. So yes. something is working inside you, you see. And over the years I've been sharing, because I've been sharing for 30, more than 30 years, I've noticed that, that sometimes, you know, big, huge, powerful no suddenly collapses into yes, you see. Everybody is, for everybody it's possible. You also. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> Maybe somebody likes to take it in another direction. Oh, you have a question? Good, good. Come, yeah. You're from, you're living in Berlin? Ah, oh, you're the guy that does tours. Right, right. Is this your is this your philo is, is this your philosophy? What? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe you forgot which one you put on today. Yeah. yeah. Can you stick different ones over chill? Can that be taken off and you put another one? It looks like you could take that one off and put another one. Just <laughs> you could have just be, you see, just be. Yeah. Um, 
I think I would like to really dive into death and love. Into what? Death and love. Death and love. Yes, and, and I, I come from a family. I think one of my main problems, this is why I'm in spirituality maybe, that was not really loving. There wasn't much love in your family. Yeah, there was not like abuse or something, but there was not love. Okay. It's very flat. And we, did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I have a brother that lives in Berlin and a brother in Israel. Okay. And, um, Two brothers, yeah. Yeah. And um, there was not affection in the family. We didn't hug, you know, when I came back to visit Israel. I got like a bit of, like this from my mother. Yeah. And uh, my father and all the brothers, they, they, they cannot have this. They're not any capable of bodily... Um, and between your other brothers and you? With my younger is better, but um, it's still there is a distance. There is a gap. And I think I'm very occupied now with, with this ability to love. And one of, I think, the fascinating story in my family, I lost my mother in 2018. Um, and I got a phone call um, for my older brother. He suddenly... He became emotional, you know, and uh, said, yeah, mother died. She died in the house, she was alone. Um, and then I called to my home and somebody answered me. It was a relative who came to identify the body. Um, and I asked him, his name was Arya. Is my mother is on the floor? And uh, he said, yes. And in that moment, you know, when I home, I'm holding my phone, I cannot see anything. It was not like a smartphone. It was like a regular call. Um, she was, I didn't see it, but she was lying on the floor dead. Um, just intuitively, I asked him to uh, guard her, you know, keep a good eye on her or something like this. Like, and I started to cry and loved my mother like I never loved my mother all my life. And since that situation, you know, I'm, I'm like boggled. You know, he talked about family and everything about, you know, this maybe inability to really love on a very deep level. First of all, family members, and then romantic then partner. So why don't we try to understand what love is about, actually? Because people use the word love, you know. What do people mean by love, you know? What do you mean, in a way, when you say love and talk about your mother in the context of love? You know? what, what do you really mean by that? I mean, I give you an example because I've got two eight-year-old daughters. You know, I'm 80 and I'm very lucky I had a relationship with a young woman and we decided to make children and we've got two little girls. And um, one day, one of them was driving actually with Indira in the car, in my car, sitting in the back of my car, and she had a pen, and she was drawing on the back of the seat, you know, <laughs> having a lot of fun. And then Indira noticed she was doing that. Yeah? So Indira said, you know, um, Amelia, that may be not a good idea. Maybe Papa won't be very happy about that. And she said, it's okay, he loves me. You see? So we never discussed about love, you see. We never discussed about it. But it seems to me she absolutely understood where our connection was, you see. I never told her I love you. But she just knows because maybe I brought her some water, uh, maybe I read her a story. You know, maybe I bought her the pen which she used on my car. You know, she just knows so many small gestures that our basic connection is love. Because for me, love is a kind of energy. It's not, oh, I love you and here's some flowers, you know. Have some flowers, you know. This is a very wrong idea of love, which actually the society supports. This sort of romantic love story, you know. But it seems to me love is something much more fundamental and it doesn't need to be spoken because it's very clear. And these, these two girls are actually twins. They were born in the same time. They're dissimilar twins and they love each other to bits. They have a great life, the two of them together. 
they also fight sometimes. Sometimes one of them makes the other sad, you know, all kinds of things happen. But if, if the, because they go to different schools, you know, when, when in the afternoon they come back from their different schools, they are immediately asking, where is my sister? Where is my sister? You see? So when one sister says, where's my sister, this is, this is love happening. She's not saying, I love my sister. She just wants to know where her sister is. You know? They want to meet. You know? And they want to play together, maybe. So this, for me, is love. You know? And so love, for me, is something very fundamental, very deeply energetic. And it's not just about humans, of course. It's about other possibilities. For example, yesterday I got the news that one of our birds, we have a number of birds walking around in the courtyard, and there's one pheasant, a white pheasant with a red nose. He's been living in the courtyard, we figured, 15 years. 15 years, and he's never flown away. And he and I became, I don't know if he's a he or a she actually, but anyway, I call him a he, but maybe he's a she. But anyway, he got to have a special connection with me. So he's always been sleeping outside. I have a little balcony and on the balcony there's a shutter and he always sleeps on a particular shutter for years and years. And whenever he has a bit of spare time, he comes and walks up and down on the balcony, the edge of the balcony. And in the summer, if I leave the door open, he'll come in and say hi. You know, so we have some sort of connection. So I was very sad to hear yesterday that he suddenly disappeared. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? He's been there for 15 years, well fed, having a nice life, a few other pheasants walking around. Pheasants are usually not really into people. You know, They usually stay in the bushes. But we've got another one, you can see him tomorrow. We've got a very colorful one, also walks around very free, you see. So those pheasants have learned that we are completely friendly to them. So this is, and you can say, also love, you see. Tomorrow, you, just near the, 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 the pond, you probably can come across, you can ask Saraswati, she'll show you this colored, colorful pheasant. Yeah, He's been also about 15 years. So why doesn't he fly away? So there's a good life. He gets fed every day, you know, no hassles, not many hassles. A few people around, they seem friendly. You see? So this, this is love, you know? So I'm, I'm a bit upset that this white pheasant may have, we decided today, people who know about animals told me, well, probably he's gone somewhere to die. So then I was immediately a little bit touched and thought, well, why can't he die here? You know, I'm his friend. You know, but apparently animals don't do that. They go away somewhere and hide in the bushes and, and die. If I go back to the crux and to the story of the girls, maybe you can... I f now I try to reflect what, what is those crux that I was right. talking about. And I think those crux is that when I feel love... I feel also punishment, this expectation to punished, to be punished. Yeah. Is that what and I think happened? this is something that I'm trying to liberate myself, but it's very hard. And this is what actually happened in your family, that you were in moments when you felt maybe something you can call love, you were then punished in some way. So you have a connection between punishment and, uh, and love. Yeah, but not like a direct abuse, but maybe more of, of shame or guilt that was in the family or, or more absence that caused me to feel that I'm not worthy to feel this love. You know, I met a man once in one of my meetings years ago, and he worked as a gardener in some gardens, and there were other gardeners working there. And he, one day he told me, I never eat my lunch with the others. I always go and sit separately and eat my lunch. And he was a great meditator, great meditator, very much a very alone kind of guy. Yeah? So anyway, we, I gradually got to know him. And he told me an amazing story because when he was uh, a baby, his, his foot was uh, against his leg, as you can imagine. It, and so he, a doctor gave his mother the advice 
put a piece of paper between his leg and his foot. And then after a while, you put a thicker piece of paper. And you keep doing that, you know, and gradually the foot will come back. So the mother loved the son, so that seemed like a good idea. But what happened to the son? So every time the mother came in a loving gesture, he felt pain. So for him, he got the connection of love and pain. Hence, he couldn't eat lunch with the other gardeners. He had to go and sit separately. He had to live very, very separate. He did have a, a girlfriend, I think she was, maybe a wife. So he, he, he was in relationship with at least one other person. But he, you could feel there's something about this man where he can't really um, share love, you could say. And when, he, when I heard this story, it seems to me this is, this is a very wonderful story illustrating how things can be perceived very differently. His mother probably always felt she's coming and very loving, making his foot better and better and better. And he had the impression every time my mother comes, she gives me pain. So love is a bit complicated. <laughs> I don't know. We'll keep on. But with your brothers, did you have a different connection with your brothers when you were younger? With my younger, I was very close to. And uh, so when you say very close to, what does that mean for you? We were in the same room, and uh, <coughs> the connection is was harmonious, not yeah, good, good. Yeah. Uh, with the older is more problematic, a uh, lot of competition and all of them. All of them. Right, um, right. Alienation, stuff like this. Right, right. And you're here now for a week or five Probably days, too. so what what do you experience here? Um, there's a different uh, vibration. Yeah. It is not typical to... You know, when I go to Israel, you have the Israeli news loud, everybody's stressed, you know, everybody's in deep trauma, you know, running around like crazy, and here it's just like, you know. All right. Yeah. It's like the place is not troubled by the problems of the world. Here you mean? Yeah. All right. It's cool. Okay. So it's like, I, I'm not going to get healed in a week, but it's a nice uh, push right. towards how things could, could, could be like, you know, without pain. Just yeah, well, you can come from Berlin very easily. Yeah. If you want to, you can get involved here gradually. Yeah. We see, I'm also thinking about India and, yeah, and looking for the love, the lost <laughs> love. <laughs> Well, it takes some time, you know. But I think now, talking about love, maybe you, you have a, a slightly different idea about love, you know. The love, love is very fundamental, it seems to me. And love is not necessarily nice, you see. Because actually, I was the one who told him to stop talking, you see. That was maybe a slightly shocking moment, wasn't it? He was full of good cheer in the retreat. He wanted to share all his ideas with everybody. And after maybe two days, I said, uh, maybe you can be quiet. You know? So that was in a way very shocking. You know? It wasn't very loving. But in another way, if he comes to understand what I was talking about, that would also be love, I think. So love is not necessarily lovely, 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 you know, have a rose flower or something, you know. I'm thinking about India because um, I shared that maybe with some people here. It's very hard to retreat in the West. If I understand right, your process was long years of, of sitting or, or reflecting inside. And I think as much as I understand myself or humans, um, the only way to heal is to um, expand our ability to feel pain. I think love is natural, it's the state of life. Love, love, you know, life is old, but the problem is pain, and we, most of people cannot feel the pain. It's too dangerous to feel the pain. You know? 
I feel that I, in order to feel the pain, I need time. You know, I need vipassanas. I need, I need the West, unfortunately, because everybody is so like, you know, occupied with just escaping something. Just get me the smartphone, get me the next thing to put on my mouth, you know. So it's. I, I don't want to spoil your dreams, but India is a bit different now. When I, I came I heard. to India 50 years ago, it was a bit like your dream. But they've learned a lot from the West in the last 50 years. Yeah, I, I felt Corona was just like a one big retreat, like nature just sent us, go home, you know, just do your stuff. You know, <laughs> you're just too busy with your... Yeah, but, but this is what I understood for many people, that globalization is just everywhere and India is not heavenly as it, as it was. But, uh, anyway, if this time here touches something inside, and you feel that you can welcome that, even without really understanding it, then I suggest you come when you have time. You can <laughs> come for a week and just help in the daily life, be back. you know, or you can come at a weekend, whatever, whatever you like, you know. In your own way, you can get involved. And you, by getting involved, you meet people who probably are living more in love than maybe you are, and who didn't necessarily have those kind of experiences when they were young. Or maybe they had them, but they've dealt with them later. Yeah, definitely be back. It's a very unique place. Okay, good. So we have a new topic now. Voila, ah, great subject. Somebody want to come and talk about love? Some aspect of love? These girls that I was talking about, they call him Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a great video. We have, I don't know if you've seen it, but downstairs we have a, a, a punch bag, you know, and boxing gloves. And the, one of these two little girls, there's a video of her boxing with you, you know, mm, no. maybe last week. Uh, and she's boxing mm. away and laughing and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh. You remember this? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And you understood she's just loving you by doing this boxing, yeah? Yeah, I can feel her love like in so many situations. It's just such an amazing journey also with the with your children. Like me when I came I was just totally afraid to to even being around them. And now it's just they're pretty scary, yeah. Yeah, I was so scared of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were so spontaneous that I could never know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the aspect that came to my mind is courage. Courage as an as a trust to that which deep down I feel I wanna do. But what is often held back by by my beliefs that are often invisible to me. And I always feel that when I, I mean, I see it more and more, but always when I don't follow this, this, what is really trying to come out, then I push it down or unconsciously push it down or don't trust it or think, okay, I'm not worthy to control them. I'm not worthy to tell them what to do. I'm not, like, I'm not allowed to do the stuff that comes up because I'm too, yeah, too small. Please don't tell my girls what to do, okay? I don't tell them what no, to do. I'd rather you don't tell them what to do. No, I don't. They know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <know>? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're very much living this be as you are, you know, be as mm. you are. Mm. No, it's another aspect, what I, what I mean. It's, it's this trust to what I really want to do that I often 
and you have an idea, there is some idea that sabotages you in any moment doing what you, if you like, what your decision is in that moment is prevented by some idea. You, you were almost going to say, I'm not good enough, I think. Yeah. So it's... you have an idea, strong idea that you're not good enough and therefore certain things uh, aren't allowed because you're not good enough. Yeah, because others are better, better are above me, are they know better what I should do, and all this nonsense, um, and all this nonsense. And yeah, it's so if you can, if you can see those kind of structures, yeah, these are structures in the mind, yeah. If you see those structures, because maybe they repeat quite often. So there are certain structures which may be familiar. Then you can start to say to yourself, I don't, th I don't take that anymore. You know? I don't know if I'm good enough or I'm not good enough. But when this thought comes up, this is only a thought and I'm not going to take it anymore. You know? So then you can become aware. You can watch what's happening with the mind, what kind of thoughts are coming. If that thought, I'm not good enough, shows up, as it probably does several times a day, you immediately are there with it and you don't take it anymore. And in mm. this way, you can deal with that thought, which is only a thought, it's not, there's no truth about it. Who's deciding you're not good enough, you know? Mm. Who's the judge yeah. for that? You're the you're yeah, the one. Yeah, you're judging yeah. yourself not being good, good enough. <laughs> you're, you're the kind of judge in your life. Mm. Yeah? I mean, it's I mean, it's a wonderful journey here, and it's it's changing so, so much. It's changing. It's it's mm. getting yeah. It's I cannot express it in words really, but somehow it seems that. It's also going in circles, eh? and I I forget what I already lost of my of my structures. But it's yeah, it's but it's. I mean, do you have a strong judge inside? Yeah, of course, very strong judge. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like any situation almost that I. So where does do. this judge come from then? Because it, maybe it would be rather than dealing with all the different judgments you have, deal with the judge figure out what's this how did I get this judge was that daddy because you know you don't have much connection with me yeah? mm. you know this mm. because you have some issue with daddy I think and mm. I'm your daddy because I happen to act like a daddy here maybe so that that maybe is where you can look you know what was there in your relationship with your father that created inside you a judge Mm. Was he judging you a lot? Yes, the kind of what I feel is that is that it was just difficult to to act my own way because there was always some um, yeah fear of penalty, like even watching television in the evening, and I was scared of watching it because. When he came home, he could find out. So I already was very, very detailed about how to watch, how to watch television. But back then, the televisions were, it's not just one example of many, but they, they were becoming hot when they, when they were running long. So he came in late and checked the television when it was dark and everything. I planned it perfectly. <laughs> everything worked, but he put the hand on the television. And then, yeah, it was like, yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. And he like I knew you were wrong in this. In and sense. he would punish you for something like that? That you were using too much television? There was not really material punishment or, or something like you have to stay at home. It was just disappointment that he showed me in one way or the other. So he didn't hit us. He didn't say, you, you, you know, not allowed to go out anymore. But it was mostly with the, with the attitude of of this, what I just said, this, I knew it, that so you he, are not... He took a kind of role of being daddy, which included, in a way, being your boss. 
Yeah, so he was your daddy and your boss. Yeah. Because it doesn't necessary. It's not necessary that the father is the boss. Yeah. Mm. But it's, it's maybe deep it wasn't entrenched your, in me. Yeah. That's, yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's why I also have this this male that I have to decide. So, especially when I'm with Nataraj, so it's I have this. It's just difficult to let go of my of my way when I when I do stuff with him. And maybe just put in the father, now it's a brother thing. I But, mean, you yeah. you could have some interesting talks together. Yeah, because definitely. He also has a sort of strong story with his father. Yeah, he also doesn't. He didn't talk to me for the first two years he lived here. No, <laughs> <laughs> he only talks very occasionally now, but it's getting slightly better. You also don't talk to me. Yeah, I don't talk to you because I'm afraid. Afraid. Yeah, and I think I'm not worthy of like taking your time. And so, who would you suggest is more worthy than you to take my time? Can you tell me which one I should be spending more time with? <laughs> well, Na I always I mean, when I say something to you. I, I should spend more time with Natarise. <laughs> no. So maybe my advice to you is to try to go beyond the particular structure and try to go to the root, you know, because it seems as if the root has got something to do with your father, some way he was acting, maybe not exactly the father, but the way he behaved uh, in the family created in you a sort of judge. And now you're doing the judging, yeah? Because your mm. father's not around, so you're actually now your own judge. And that's not a really good situation <laughs> because you don't want to have a judge. Mm. You didn't want one before, maybe. And uh, but there wasn't much you could do about it. But now you're a big boy, and now you don't want to judge again. And now you can do something. Yeah, you have to develop awareness. You know, awareness comes out of a quiet mind. When you have a quiet mind, there's a possibility you can see when not good enough shows up. For example. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like sometimes or often in everyday life, there's this, maybe instead of being with the, with, with some stuff that comes up, because I have so much to do, I, it's always easy to, to go to the next thing, because even not going to the next thing, there's another judge coming that that then says, yeah, I should be doing this or that. And then, like, yes, you're lucky, so many see, ideas. Because we're not, in this community, we, we have various businesses and you're involved in the guest house business, yeah? Mm. But we're not trying to be very business-like, you know? Mm. Our real business here is not, you know, getting another guest for the guest house. The, 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 the business here is for you to deal with your inner stuff, mm. right? So Definitely, nobody yeah. minds if you're not a very efficient, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, guy. You know, mm -hmm. we don't mind too much. If you get really bad, we might have to bring somebody else in, you know, mm -hmm. to support you or uh, take over or something. Yeah. But basically, there is there is nobody coming to you and saying that's not good enough. Yeah. Only once, because once you did really do something up. that wasn't yeah. good enough. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that was a bit different because that was a real situation where somehow it was necessary to deal with that together with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for most of the time, nobody's coming and in, interfering in, in, in how you spend your time. Yeah. So I'm inviting you now to spend more of your time, not on running the guest house, but to run you. Because that's the whole effort mm. of our community. It's not a community where we're trying to get a few more guests, you know. Mm. Well, we also try to do yeah, that, of course, but we're, that's not the primary effort. The primary effort is to become free of whatever it is inside us, which prevents us being free. Which, in your case, <laughs> seems to be something to be something to do with your father. Maybe, maybe not actually your father. Maybe something to do with him. And now you've taken this role on as a as a judge. 
Maybe you start by changing it from high court judge to ordinary judge, mm. you know, <laughs> and then local judge, and then no judge. <laughs> we have a question? No? It's just a funny, funny idea, right? Just put the judge down, <laughs> ah. let him retire or something. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 now he's in, invited me to talk about him, you see. So when he was younger, he had a brother. He had two parents and a brother, you see. And his brother had certain learning difficulties. I don't know if I can say it like that. And so the parents were, were giving a lot of attention to the brother and less attention to him, all right? Mm -hmm. So what, what would, what, what's the effect of that, you see? When he sees always his brother getting much more attention than him, he got the idea that his parents care more about his brother than they do about him. And so he used to go down to the basement in the house and get stoned on marijuana. And so that has an effect, you see. Actually, the parents didn't mean it like that. What's very clear now would be that Actually, they didn't mean it like that, but they had no choice because the brother had various things going on where he needed a lot of support. Yeah, like a similar story with me that for me it was mostly not Mariana, maybe when I became 16, 17. But before that, I also isolated myself very much because my, like I didn't really have a connection with my parents, with my sister or brother or I didn't really have many friends or actually no friends maybe one friend when I became 14 and my strategy was what I'm doing now a lot here is to go into computer and play computer games are you, and hide uh, me uh, hiding so there a Nasiraj of lots to yeah. talk about he's a professional actually. <laughs> yeah. he spent three or four years before he came here only doing computer games you know so you have a lot in common, yeah, you have yeah. trouble with your daddies and you both get into computer games. Yeah, that's why it's so difficult to, to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to choose a computer game you can both play. I mean, well, let's, let's call it life. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But his story is a very common story. I guess everybody here has basically something like this going on. And, you know, as I can understand, you know, the first step is, is to get your mind quieter. And for that, meditation is very good. So meditation is a way to get a quiet mind. And then when you get a quiet mind, you can gradually get much more awareness about what's coming in the mind, what, what is there in the mind. Because when you have so many thoughts, you can't really, you can't really um, focus on a particular thought. But once there are less thoughts, then you can actually see that there are certain thoughts like, I'm not good enough. You can see these coming regularly. And then you can start to develop awareness where you, you, you become aware of what thoughts are coming. So it's a process that takes actually a lot of time. It's not something we do normally in our life. Yeah? So it needs time. And here in this community, yeah. you get given as much time as you like for that, within reason. Yeah, that's, yeah. My judge is saying it's, it's going well. <laughs> What's that? It's going well. I, I, yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. Uh, feels like that this pressure of this self-induced pressure of having to go faster you know, on this on this path is is not so present anymore. Uh, I think by choosing to live in this kind of community then you're actually making a statement to yourself that you're really interested in doing all this. Mm -hmm. you know? So there's nothing more that you need to do, I would say. You, mm -hmm. You're making it clear to yourself 
that this is your priority this is my priority and my priority is to do this inner work yeah definitely yeah. so everything good yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> Does anybody have a question they'd really like to ask, but they're a bit scary to come and sit here? Because you can ask your question from where you're sitting. We'll give you a microphone. What is love? Mm -hmm. What is love? What is love? I already answered that question. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.